So the Samsung G9 OLED. It's been about three, four months now. I've got it fully working with no issues. I've been able to fix all my technical problems, really dial in all the settings. So I wanted to do like a long-term review. I know three, four months isn't really like a long-term type review, but it's been quite a journey to get to this point of full functionality. So uh, yeah, let's talk about it. First, I wanna tackle the settings that I'm currently using, just something that if you just bought the monitor or you're still thinking about buying the monitor, you'll know what to set up straight out of the box because mine was definitely not properly optimized for use straight out the box. Then I wanna get into some of the issues that I had and how I fixed them. I know I mentioned some in my uh, seven day review video, my seven days and seven minutes type video. You can check it out up here, fair warning. Um, the audio is pretty off. Anyway, I left that video having a couple issues still. I was able to fix those and on my journey to fix those, I think I read pretty much every single issue anybody's ever had with this monitor on the internet so i'll run through a couple of the most common ones as well and then i just want to get into my overall thoughts on using this thing the past three four months the past probably two months fully functional how i've liked it if i think it's really worth the money and what my overall opinion is on it so let's go hop into the settings all right so talking about settings We'll go from top to bottom. I did reset the entire monitor recently, so I knew what it looked like straight out of the box, which was kind of a stupid idea because then I had to re-download the firmware. But anyway, I documented every change that I made from what it would be when it came straight out of the box. I will mention the color settings that I changed when we get into white balance, but just a uh, forewarning, you probably shouldn't copy my settings. You probably shouldn't copy anybody's settings online because every panel is gonna be different straight out of the box. Keep that in mind, don't copy other people's color settings. So first thing we're gonna wanna do is put it into game mode um, disclaimer, this is going to be about gaming on this monitor. Any settings I go over won't be a disadvantage to you if you do productivity work on here, but I will be talking from a standpoint of somebody who uses it for gaming and not with a Mac with a PC. So anyway, how to get into game mode, you're going to open your home settings with the home button, scroll down to settings, and then scroll over to game mode. We're going to turn that on. That will unlock that 240 hertz refresh rate and then a couple other picture settings that we'll go over in a second. So now that we're in game mode, if you ever want to access any of the settings quickly, you can just press and hold the play pause button. This will open up this little game mode bar. It's very annoying. Whenever you turn the monitor on, this will pop up. So don't be turning your monitor on and off in the middle of a game because this will be very distracting. Scroll over to settings. And then right at the top of the list, we got game mode. Obviously that's on. Virtual aim point, I would never turn this on because since this is an OLED monitor, if you keep a crosshair in the middle of the screen, it's probably gonna burn in very fast. Core lighting, that's just the lighting you have on the back. You can switch that to static color or it can match what's on screen. I just keep it on static white. Surround sound, this uses the information that it collects off the screen to try to reproduce some sort of three dimensional sound. I don't really suggest using this. You can play around with it if you'd like. I use headphones anyway and they tend to be pretty good with directional audio, but if you don't have headphones or and you don't have a pair of speakers, which I highly recommend getting for this monitor, the speakers aren't that great. But yeah, I would just suggest getting a pair of speakers or cheap headphones if you can. Dynamic black equalizer, that's gonna be set at zero. Since it's an OLED monitor, you shouldn't really be wanting to bring the blacks up. And if HDR is properly calibrated, then you shouldn't have any issue with this. Essentially how it works is it analyzes the scene and it will bring up black levels in an area that it deems to be important enough that may be too dark. So if you're playing a game and it senses that somebody's in the shadow it will bring up the black in that area so you can see better and game picture expert so this allows you to adjust the hdr mode for hdr 10 plus and regular hdr content hdr 10 plus is what these samsung monitors use to transfer data between hdr 10 plus content and the monitor itself i believe amazon prime videos use hdr 10 plus and anything that doesn't use hdr 10 plus will just be under your regular game hdr settings basic is just whatever the recommended settings are advanced will give you a more contrasty poppy look I actually have mine on advanced. We'll get into HDR in a little bit, but I wouldn't recommend starting out at advanced if you're just setting this up for your first time. I would keep this on basic. So now we're going to hop out of that game menu for a second. Scroll up past connection and sound up to picture. Scroll over eye care. That's just going to enable your eye saver mode and your adaptive picture. I have both of these off. Both of them will kind of fiddle with the brightness of the monitor and we don't want to be doing that, especially right off the bat, because then it just adds another variable for us to try to troubleshoot if anything goes wrong. So now we can get into the expert settings. Brightness, I have mine on 30 right off the bat. This is just going to determine the pixel brightness. It has nothing to do with HDR or contrast. It's just simply how bright the monitor is. And uh, the lower the brightness is, the longer you're going to be able to use 
use it without experiencing burn-in. As we talked about in the LGC3 video, burn-in will happen. It's just up to you on how well you take care of your monitor when that happens. If you run your monitor at 100% brightness all the time and you leave bright white things on screen, burn-in is going to happen a lot quicker. So I just don't keep the brightness at 100%. Anyway, going down to contrast, I keep that at 50. Sharpness at 10. One thing I will mention about sharpness is since I use a 4K monitor for work all day, sometimes I'll notice some pixelation when I come over to the 1440p display. One way I've learned to kind of trick my eyes into thinking it's a higher resolution is turning the sharpness down a little bit. Although the image and the text is a little bit more blurry, your eyes kind of make up for the blur and it takes away some of that pixelation that I notice right away when jumping straight from 4K to 1440p. So if you're in a similar situation where you're used to looking at 4K and now you're going to 1440p, although turning the sharpness down will make things a little bit more blurry, it is a little trick you can use to kind of trick your eyes into thinking it's a higher resolution just by taking away some of that pixelation. Color, this is essentially saturation. We're going to keep this at 25. I find anything over that, things look a little bit too saturated. But again, for you right now, since we haven't calibrated HDR yet, it might look a little bit off anyway. I would just set that at 25 for now. Tint, we're not going to touch. We'll keep that at zero. That's just the magenta and the green balance. Now, contrast enhancer, this is a smart monitor feature where it will prevent excessive differences between light and dark areas by analyzing the scene and running some sort of algorithm. When we're just trying to get the picture set up and we're just trying to get the monitor working properly, we don't want to, like I said earlier, deal with any variables that we don't know what's working behind the scenes. And since we haven't set up HDR calibration in Windows yet, we just want to keep everything that can add another variable off. And same thing with HDR tone mapping. We're going to keep this to static rather than dynamic. Now there's a lot that goes into HDR tone mapping. Uh, the TLDR is static makes a set tone curve for HDR content, specifically in the bright area. For example, if you have something that's 4,000 nits and the monitor only produces 800 nits, it has a set curve that it uses for those highlights where that 4,000 is now equal to 800. 800 nits may be now equal to 710, and it keeps that set ratio, if you will. Dynamic, on the other hand, the monitor will actively try to compensate for the different brightness levels of what's showing on screen. And although this might make your screen look brighter, and some people will say it makes it look more vivid, the downside of that is you might lose some detail in the highlights, and you're most likely going to bring up some of the mid-tones that you're not supposed to, same with some of the black levels, and it's going to throw off the overall creative look that whoever created the content you're watching or playing was going for in the first place. It's just constantly changing the different luminance levels and we don't want to do that for now. We want to keep it at static. HDR tone mapping is actually a really interesting concept. If you're interested in learning more about how it works, I'll drop a really good Reddit post down below that I found that really does a great job of explaining it way better than I'm going to do. So like I said, for now, we'll keep it at static. If you want to learn more about it, you can check it out down below. Color tone. This I set to natural. I know a lot of people say it looks good on warm one, and I totally agree right off the bat it did. But then once I found I went to natural and I adjusted some of the white balance settings, I could get it to an even better color. So we'll go to natural for now, and then we'll go straight down into that white balance that I talked about. On the screen now is the settings I used. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, you don't want to copy my exact settings. This is just kind of a starting place for you since every panel out of the factory isn't going to be manufactured the same. Best practice if you really want to calibrate this thing perfectly is to get a colorometer. Gamma, we don't have any other option other than ST2084. I have mine set to negative two. That's kind of a personal preference. I would keep that at zero for now. Shadow detail, I like my shadows to look really inky, so I have mine at negative one, but again, I would keep this at zero for now. Color space settings, I have mine to normal. And peak brightness, so I have mine set to high. There's definitely something funky going on with this though, because if I turn it down to low, it looks brighter than if I have it on high. But I just have mine on high because I've found that that's what looks best to me. VRR control, so, Almost everybody online, when they first have an issue with this monitor, the first thing people say is turn off G-Sync and turn off variable refresh rate control. So I just have mine off. That was one of the first things I did on this monitor when I started having issues with it in the first place. So I suggest just having that off. Once you get the monitor working properly, if you want to turn it on because you notice some screen tearing, you can do so, but I've never noticed any screen tearing, so I just keep it off. So now that we've got our picture settings set up to a very solid baseline, you're going to want to go into your window settings and look up the HDR calibration tool. I see a lot of people have problems with HDR online all the time and they haven't set this up and there's really no way to tell what problem you're having until you've properly calibrated your monitor for HDR. So within the HDR calibration tool itself, you're going to have your blacks set to zero, obviously, and then you're going to follow along to the prompts. So now if you right click in a blank area and hit display settings, you should see that your color profile is your HDR calibrated profile along with the date that you did that. I guess I should have mentioned this earlier, make sure you have HDR turned on. And then within the window settings themselves, after the calibration, I'm not 100% sure what Windows 10 looks 
looks like, but in Windows 11, I have HDR on, HDR video streaming on, auto HDR I have off, and SDR content brightness I have at 50. The 50 on the SDR content brightness along with the 30 brightness setting on the monitor is a pretty solid brightness for me without it being too dark. So now your monitor should be looking pretty good. If you really wanna go in and mess around with contrast enhancer and dynamic tone mapping, you can do so now. Again, I linked that article about tone mapping down below. It's really recommended you stick to static even though it might not look as vivid and bright. It's gonna give you a more accurate representation of what the creator original intent was and you're more likely to see those details in the highlights, but you can't knock somebody for liking something. If somebody likes the dynamic tone mapping because it looks brighter and more vivid, then so be it. So that's all the settings. You should be at a pretty solid baseline now, and it shouldn't look like absolute hot garbage like it did out of the box. Now I wanna get into some of the troubleshooting tips that I have and some of the issues that I encountered myself over the past couple months. Yeah. All right, so troubleshooting. First and foremost, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you use an HDMI 2.1 cable. I know a lot of people and I myself could not get DisplayPort to work. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's under 15 feet and you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's a high quality cable, not some garbage. This monitor requires a lot of juice, a lot of bandwidth, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the highest quality cable possible. Now, if you watched the last video, you'll know at the end of it, I was still having problems with the screen flicker. That was totally solved by going to a new cable that was under 15 feet. Now, not even just this monitor, you don't really want to use an HDMI cable over 15 feet because you'll lose bandwidth that way anyway. I just thought I had ordered a 15 foot cable, but apparently it was 20. So moral of the story, check the size of your cable because uh, size does matter in this instance and a shorter is better. Second troubleshooting tip I have, I alluded to it earlier. I know a ton of people that have fixed problems with this monitor by just turning off G-Sync in their NVIDIA control panel settings. So if that's not off for you, go ahead and do that. And while you're in the NVIDIA control panel settings, just make sure everything is set correct in there you have 5120 by 1440 because you're using an hdmi 2.1 you can set it to 12 bit color but i believe the monitor only produces 10 so you're really just forcing more data through the cable that you don't need to be which talking about bit depth brings me into my third troubleshooting tip which is banding so gradient banding or color banding this is an issue that certain people have with oleds anyway but i realized that it's enhanced if you put on that contrast enhancer that you see in the settings that we talked about earlier and i noticed that with contrast enhancer on high you notice the banding a lot more and it becomes a lot more distracting another simple yet easily overlooked troubleshooting tip is make sure in windows and in nvidia control panel if you have a nvidia graphics card your hertz are set to 240 fps when i was doing a bunch of troubleshooting when i was messing around with a bunch of settings i was like my game feels a little bit choppier than normal and then i went in and realized that windows had reset me to 120 hertz so just double check to make sure you're set at 240. And my last small piece of troubleshooting tips that I haven't seen anybody have a problem with necessarily online, but something I just noticed is that the box that powers the monitor itself, that box gets hot. I originally had it mounted under my desk and when I was having some issues with the monitor, I thought that maybe this was causing some issues. I don't think it was, but just keep in mind to give that proper airflow because you could get that thing clogged up with dust or it could overheat pretty quickly. But if you're having issues with this monitor, those are the main things that I would check on first. Any specific problems you might be able to find answers for out there. As the monitor gets older, there's more and more people having problems and troubleshooting them online. But the main issues that I came across and that I've seen a lot of other people come across can be fixed by those things. The cable especially. Make sure you have a high quality HDMI cable. Like I said, I went through three cables and finally found the right one that works. So my overall opinion, my overall thoughts on owning this thing and really being able to use it for like two months now, but troubleshooting for the two months before that. I like it a lot. I love playing on it. I think everything looks great now that I have my settings dialed in every game that I've played on it looks absolutely amazing it's totally given me a new life in gaming multiplayer games feel faster at 240 hertz than they did at like I was playing at like 120 before OLED was a huge jump up in fidelity without having to actually upgrade my system and overall I'm super happy that it works and that I'm able to use it but if you ask me to recommend this to somebody I don't think I could so where the problem comes in with this monitor if you have a 20 series card or older you're not gonna be able to use HDMI 2.1 because only 30 series cards or newer support that, which means you're not gonna be able to utilize the 240 hertz. Because although you could run this on DisplayPort, I know way too many people that have DisplayPort cable issues with this monitor, and I think it would be way too much of a gamble to try to buy this planning on using it with a DisplayPort. The other downside to that is even if you do have a 30 series card or newer, you probably only have one HDMI port, which means this monitor is gonna take that up. But I mean, you have to have a 30 series card or newer, you have to run with an HDMI 2.1, 
2.1, you have to be within 15 feet of your PC, and even forgetting about all of those requirements for a minute, just recommending an OLED monitor to somebody is a little bit touchy at first because immediately people get fear of burning. Like I said, it's an amazing monitor to own. I'm really glad I own it, and every time I sit down to play games at night, I'm excited to play on it. I like think about it during the day. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to play on that G9 over there. That thing's amazing. But I just happen to fit into those prerequisites that I mentioned earlier. I have a 30 series card. I don't need two HDMI ports at the same time. It's less than 15 feet away from my PC. But if you asked me if I could recommend this as a general recommendation to people, there's not a shot in hell I would recommend this monitor. But that's my three, four month review of the G9 OLED. If you guys have any questions, any comments, anything to say about what I mentioned today, any corrections to make, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.